welcome to another vlogmas video from me lauren from lauren and the books i hope you're all doing well i hope you're having a lovely vlogmas time today i'm going to be doing my bookish gift guide um i've got some recommendations here there were supposed to be 10 but right at the last minute there was one that i'm currently reading so relevant i'm currently reading it um that i'm loving so much and is so beautiful i feel like would make a beautiful beautiful christmas gift these are all books that i have read and enjoyed or um thinking I'm going to read and enjoy. There's not many on here that I haven't read, but all of which look beautiful and I just think will make absolutely wonderful gifts. Um, and also, this video comes with a disclaimer because if I know you in real life, um, hi, uh, but also, there is a chance that one of these books might be for you for Christmas because I stand by my recommendations of my bookish gift guide so much that actually some of these books here are presents that I've bought for people because I've enjoyed them so much myself, I've then gone on and bought them for other people. So, with that in mind, if I know you in real life, why not go, why not do something else instead of watch this video? Why not? What could you do instead, David? Uh, watch the Christmas Chronicles. Watch the Christmas Chronicles on Netflix. David and I have just watched the Christmas Chronicles on Netflix and we really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, if I know you in real life, just look away from this video. Don't watch it because there is a chance that some of these books may be your Christmas presents. If you want to be spoiled for that, then on your head be it. I will start with A Mouthful of Tea and then I will move on to... I've got all sorts of genres here. I've got poetry, non-fiction, short stories, fiction and picture books. Lovely, and a lovely mug from Mark Suspensers. I'm going to start with poetry. Now, I've got the poetry collections I've got to, uh, the poetry I've got to recommend to you is all from one author. Um, it's all from the author Carol Ann Duffy. Now, I'm not a big poetry lover myself. However, I do find I really, really enjoy Carol Ann Duffy's poetry. Um, so I feel like if, if someone like myself who doesn't love poetry, and you feel like you're someone who doesn't really love poetry, you know someone who you'd quite like to like poetry, but you never know what to do. But I feel like Carol Ann Duffy's probably quite a good place to start, particularly this first lot that I'm going to recommend you. So um, these are all little Christmassy um, poems, uh, long, uh, one long poem in, in each of these books. These range from about 5 99 to about 7 99 they're all tiny little um, hardback books uh, about this head. I, I realise if I put them that side, you think they're bigger than my head. They're not. They're this big. Um, and I love them all. Now, they are Christmassy, and I do sort of have an aversion to buy in someone something for Christmas that is Christmas themed. I'm very fortunate. I have a birthday in November, so if I ever want anything Christmassy, I'm always like, get it for my birthday, because then you can enjoy it on the run up to Christmas. However, these are so short, I feel like these could be enjoyed on Christmas Day or on Boxing Day or around the Christmassy time between Christmas and New year um one of these is my favorite books of all time and that is this one here this is another night before christmas um which is illustrated by rob ryan and each of these are, are illustrated by different illustrators so this one's my fave um this is pablo picasso's noel which is illustrated by leah molpetti uh mrs scrooge uh, it doesn't say who that's illustrated by but that is different Posey Simmons, that is illustrated by. Uh, the Wren Boys, by, uh, illustrated by Dermot Flynn. And The King of Christmas, which is illustrated by Lara Hawthor uh, Hawthorne. Now, I think these are lovely little buys. I think they're really, really cute. They're really great for stocking fillers. And also, these are something that I revisit every year. So even if they didn't get a chance to read it this year, this is definitely something that you could look forward to reading next year. I buy myself a new one of these every year. And this year, I've actually bought myself two. I've bought myself The Wren Boys and Mrs. Scrooge. Now, I've read The Wren Boys. And last night, I reread The King of Christmas. And yeah, I just love reading these like in December they're really really fun they're really really beautiful and I recommend them so beautiful and nice I think I'm now getting deja vu thinking I might have recommended these in a previous gift guide if I have double I really mean it and then the next poetry collection I've got is also by Carol Ann Duffy as I said this is called Sincerity it is absolutely beautiful I haven't read this yet but all I've got to go on is the fact that I really enjoy those and I've really really enjoyed um, her poetry collection The World's Wife which I read earlier this year um, this is absolutely gorgeous the um, it's pub uh, published by Picador Poetry um, it's navy with this gorgeous gorgeous um, silver star on the front and I just think it's such a beautiful thing to receive the next little batch I've got is for non-fiction recommendations now non-fiction until I started booktube was a genre that I never really read at all and if I did have to read it I sort of like went begrudgingly to it sort of remembering textbooks and things like that now non-fiction nowadays is one of my favorite favorite um genres and I really really love it and I've got five um non-fiction books here which I one that I'm halfway through uh, two that I've read and loved this year and one that I haven't read this year but I feel like would be very very interesting um the first one is one that I'm actually halfway through and I've put it on a bit of hiatus um because of Christmas reading this is Brazen Rebel Ladies Who Rock the World by Penelope Baggio um, now there's 
plenty and plenty of these sort of books on the market at the moment. Books about uh, women, books about um, uh, the Rebel Girls books, there's a couple of volumes of that out now, there's quite a few, I mean I've got quite a few on my bookshelves but, and I've read quite a lot and I've got to say that this is one of my favourite ones. Now in here, these are all women that I hadn't heard of or hadn't been featured in previous books like this I've read. So I feel like they've got the edge, uh, Penelope Baggio's got the edge here. And also, I really like the way it's done. So each, so we'll, we'll just pick one by, by random. And this is uh, Delia Akeley, who's an explorer, and it's all told through comic strips um, telling her life. And then it all finishes on one big piece of art, which sort of summarises the effect that she has had on the world um, and the work that she's done has had on the world. And I really, really love this. I've just got up to Betty Davis, which obviously is someone that I, I um, have heard of. But yeah, these are all people that I haven't seen mentioned in previous books like this. So obviously that's a personal thing to me, having not <laughs> having read those books in the first place. But I feel like this is probably one of the best ones out there. So if you're looking to get um, a book about um, magnificent women and things like that, then this is probably one of the ones that I would definitely definitely recommend I feel like this is peaked above the others then I've got a book that I read um, earlier this year and absolutely love now there is always a um, sort of a worry that when you're doing your Christmas gift guide you don't just want it to be a replication of um, your favorite books of the year but in this um, instance I really feel like this book that I've read and loved will be read and loved by many many others and it's a really it's, it's not it's, it's not particularly a beautiful book but I just feel like it's really enjoyable to, to most people and that is this is going to hurt by Adam Kay now Adam Kay, um, this is Adam Kay's secret diaries of um, during his time as a junior doctor. Now I've picked this because I feel like this would be a great, great secret Santa gift. If you've got some of a secret Santa who you don't really know um, or you're not really sure what to do, this is a book that I feel like could be read and enjoyed by the masses. Um, it's also pretty cheap. I mean I don't recommend buying books from supermarkets or online but I know it's really cheap. So if you've got a sort of secret Santa that's under a fiver then I know you can get this for like three pound 50 to four pounds um, and I just feel like it would be a really great gift. I howled when I was reading this, absolutely couldn't stop laughing, found it hilarious but also it was really weighty and serious with the sort of cuts that the NHS are having to take and um, the sort of things that we're having to go through. I work for the NHS so it was double, double the fun for me. This is why I've said don't, um, don't watch this if I know you because the person I've got for Secret Santa <laughs> is getting a copy of this. This is my copy, but I've got them a new copy. Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I feel like it's really valuable. I feel like it's a real turning po uh, talking point. And I just, I, I would sort of defy anyone to read this and not come out with something. I loved it and thought it was fantastic and hilarious and really informative and a sort of true representation of what's going on in the NHS in our com in our country. So if you, I know this has been really, really pushed hard and I've seen it in so many windows. And like I said, it's available in supermarkets and stuff. So. I really would recommend this as a read. Even if you haven't read it yourself, go out and read it. Go on, give it a go. Now, the next book I've got is one um, that I haven't read yet, but I went to the Cambridge Literary Festival last weekend, um, and I have done a vlog of that. I will link that down below if you're interested. And the first talk that we went to on the day was a talk about plastic, and um, in particular, uh, Turning the Tide on Plastic, which is the title of this book by Lucy Siegel. Um, they also do this book in a naked hardback, which is also very beautiful. I bought the paperback edition. But something Lucy Siegel said towards the end of the talk, and this is something that I'm so interested in and really want to work hard to, to reduce my plastic... Um, my plastic use, my, particularly my single use plastic use, um, is that she hasn't met anyone that hasn't been interested in this topic. So if you want to buy somebody um, a sort of non-fiction book that you think um, would be interested to them, then I really feel like cutting back on plastic is something that everybody should um, have an interest in. It's something that's going to really affect um, our future and our children's future and our grandchildren's future and I just feel like she was so eloquent and this book is split into such really helpful um, sections and I know that I'm on this channel going to be doing a series um, about my um, my usage of plastic um, in the new year and um, she talks about a method and um, methods that you can do to tips to help yourself cut back on plastic and yeah I just feel like if you're looking to buy somebody something non-fiction and something you think will appeal to them then I think she's right in that she you, you will be hard pressed to find someone who wouldn't be interested in this topic so yeah I'm looking forward to doing that and this is one of those books that I said is a Christmas present that's one there 
put that down gently because need to wrap that up. Um, and then this book is a book that I read earlier this year and um, I think this will particularly appeal to um, people who are my age and read uh, similar books to myself and the author <laughs> um, in the time when we were growing up and that is Bookworm which uh, is by Lucy Mangan and it's a memoir of childhood reading. Um, it looks beautiful, it's got this beautiful tree with this gold foil but like rose gold foil with different aspects of um books that she's read as a child um george's marvelous Med medicine i can see there um and uh, the witch's hat and ballet shoes um plop the owl who's afraid of the dark and this was just a lovely lovely journey just sort of reminiscing about books that i had read in my childhood now i am 32 and i feel like lucy mangan is maybe two or three years older than me so there was a few books in there that she didn't that she'd read that I hadn't um, but it really goes into great depths about Narnia which was a, a series of books that I loved as a child and uh, just all sorts of Charlotte's Web, uh, The Railway Children which was a book I sort of agonised and ploughed through as a child and just it was a really nice sort of nostalgia trip and I feel like if you know somebody in their 30s who was a massive massive reader when they were a child then this is definitely the book for them because it's a really really nice revisit of all the wonderful books that they may have read when they a child and it looks beautiful so yeah I would recommend this as well and then the last book I've got in the non-fiction section is a book that I read right at the beginning of this year I read it in um in hardback and I've just been sent the paperback by the um by the publisher and I feel like it's definitely great for a Christmas uh, present because they've added a little bonus Christmas chapter on the end and that's Eat Up by Ruby Tando I'm actually planning on listening to the audiobook of this in the in the new year I really enjoy rereading books but I try not to do it within the same year that I've actually read it and because I've been I read this right at the beginning of the year and loved it so much I've been really waiting for the new year to come around so I can start listening to listening to the audiobook of this um, this is a book all about food appetite and eating what you want it has got some recipes in there but it's definitely not a cookbook it's all to do with people's relationships with food and um, it's got some beautiful writing in there one thing that I always mention whenever I talk about this book is Ruby Tando's ode to an uh, to a cream egg that she talks about talking about feeling the weight of a cream egg in your hand and popping it in your coat pocket and knowing it's there and when you're going to eat it and it's just fantastic as I said the paperback has now got a bonus Christmas chapter in there which I'm going to be reading at some point over the Christmas period but it's wonderful it's funny it's touching I love books about food and this book I love so I really would recommend it and the pack the hardback is also gorgeous it's got this pink background I've got it over there I'm looking up at it because it's on my favorite shelf as a book I read earlier this year spoiler um but yeah I love it and I feel feel like the paperback they just look really fun they look really really fun so those were the non-fiction books now I mentioned earlier that there was a book that had snuck onto this list because I'm currently reading it and that book is a short story collection and it's Winter Magic, which is a short story collection curated by Abby Elphinstone. I love this book. Look at the front cover. This might be one of my favourite front covers of all time. And then on the back, it's just got a list of the authors that feature in this book. And it's like a mountain with all different, I assume these are different factors of things that will appear in the short stories. I've read one short story, which was called A Night at the Frost Fair. And I am halfway through the second short story, which is called The Magic of Midwinter. Now, these book, these short stories are all set in winter, so I feel like you would be safe in buying this um, for a Christmas present, knowing that that could be read after Christmas. I mean, you can read these books anytime. I'm really into seasonal reading, so I love reading Christmas books in December. I love reading winter books in sort of January, February. But I'm really, really enjoying a... Um, children's short story collection which is not something that I read very often particularly like an anthology by different authors um, and so far loved the first short story which was um, about a girl Maya who um, traveled back in time um, to go to a frost fair when the uh, when the um, when the Thames had frozen over I think in 1788 um, and she meets a friend there and they just have a day of sort of adventure and stuff it was beautiful and lovely and I'm really enjoying the second story as well um, I feel like it's great I feel like it would fit all ages um but I think if I was if I was given this book when I was a child or a teenager I would have been off my head excited about it so if you're looking for something for somebody a little bit younger then this is definitely the way to go and with short stories and things it's always nice I sort of treat myself to one like in in bed before I go to sleep or something like that um and yeah it's just a really really lovely book and I'm really really enjoying it and I couldn't I couldn't do I couldn't read it couldn't be reading it and not include it in this um book um 
gift guide because I definitely would love to receive this as a gift and I'm, I'm, I know plenty of people who would also. And the next section is fiction books. Now these are both fiction books that I've read this year, both books that I very much enjoyed. Um, the first one is The Red Ribbon by Lucy Adlington. Now I read this in paperback um, earlier this year. This follows a 14 year old girl, Ella, um, who begins working at uh, Birchwood um, and she's working in a concentration camp making dresses and um, beautiful garments and, and things for um, sort of commander's wives and stuff um, while she is being kept in what is basically Auschwitz. Um, it's a really sort of eye-opening story told for a YA audience about the sort of atrocities that happened um, where at whereby it's still quite hopeful um so i feel like i would be perfectly comfortable giving this to a younger reader um but myself as a 30 year old 30 32 now um really really enjoyed this and um as i said i read the paperback version but this edition is absolutely beautiful it's a hardback and it's got this red ribbon that goes all the way around including the um it's not called the spine. What's that called? I don't know, but you can open that and tuck that away so you can read, but it really does look like a gift. Um, and I just absolutely loved that. When I saw that you could do that, I was like, that would make a beautiful gift. And just knowing what's inside, having read it and really, really enjoyed it and found it really powerful and, um, like like I said, really hopeful um, towards the end of the story and um, I really feel like this would make a beautiful gift so I very much enjoyed that. Um, and now I also have a um, another book that I have read this year and I actually gave this book five stars. I listened to the audiobook of this um, and absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars, thought it was amazing, thought the audio in particular was wonderful but I know so many people that would actually enjoy this story. Um, and that is A Keeper by Graham Norton which if you've watched this channel before you won't be surprised to see because you know how much I love this book. I really really love this front cover and I think that's why I wanted, I know, I know a lot of people in my life, this is another one of those books that I've bought for people this year, this is another one of um, books that I love the audiobook of, but I know people who enjoy reading and don't necessarily listen to audiobooks, and I was like, they would love this book. So this tells the story of a woman who is called Elizabeth, and she goes back to Ireland um, upon the death of her mother to sort through her mother's affairs. Um, while she's doing that, she finds letters um, that her mother has received from um, who she believes to be her father. She's never met her father. Um, and um, she finds these letters in between her mother, uh, sorry, from from um, the, the man who is her father and they're a bit sort of like rude. <laughs> They've got a few bits of sex in and stuff like that and she's always like, I can't believe this was my mother. I've never known my mother to be like that. And then you hop back and um, hear from her mother's um, perspective, Patricia, um, while she's uh, like during the time that she's meeting Elizabeth's father. Um, I've never read a story like this. It was full of twists and turns. I thought it was amazing. It's got great sort of humor in there and also like a really gripping, twisty, turny storyline. It's really cozy. Um, it's set, they've, they've got quite a lot in there to do with letters and stuff, which I love reading within books. I love um, reading letters within books. Um, and yeah, I just loved it. The end papers are beautiful as well. It's sort of like seasonal um, trees. I just feel like this is a book that I loved the twist and turn and even now I can't believe how many twists and turns and also I heard um, that the whole story was based on um, a actual true story that somebody had told Graham Norton um, that had actually happened to them in real life so I mean amazing that that has but I really don't want to spoil the actual storyline because I feel like this is another one that a lot a lot of people would enjoy so very much enjoyed that myself and um, would definitely recommend as a gift. So the last book I have in my gift guide from 2018 um, is a picture book and it's also a book that has appeared in many many people's um, gift guides this year which I think is testament to how beautiful it is and it is uh, The Restless Girls by Jessie Burton which is illustrated by Angela Barrett. Now this is a retelling of the uh, the story, the fairy tale, Twelve Dancing Princesses, which I hadn't read. I hadn't read, however, when I was reading this book, I was sort of getting like familiar flashes, so I must have heard it somewhere along the line. Um, and it's a feminist fairy tale, and it's fantastic. It's about um, 12 sisters whose mother has died in a car accident, and her, their father decides to protect them. Um, on that, that he decides to um, lock them in their bedroom um, of an evening, and they find a secret passageway behind a portrait of their mother, and they go down into these wonderful um, worlds and through gorgeous scenery. And the description in this is beautiful, mixed with some absolutely beautiful illustrations, sort of like chapter headers. That's a beautiful peacock, just trying to find a big a big photo for you a big picture for you all um this is uh, when he's trying to get um, men to come and marry his daughter the illustrations are beautiful the 
description and the story was wonderful. I really, really loved it. And I actually felt quite tearful <laughs> at quite a few points throughout it. I really, really loved it. So definitely would recommend that as well for all ages. So that is my bookish gift guide for 2018. I have a gift guide from last year and the year before. I will link both of those down below if you're interested in looking at those as well. It's always good to get as many recommendations as possible. Would love to hear if you are buying books for people this year. Who are you planning on buying books for this year and what are you planning on getting them? Do you feel like any of these books that I've mentioned might fit the brief of someone that you've been trying to think of a Christmas present for and you just can't think of one? Um, I love to buy books for presents and I feel like it's a real treat um, to also get books so um i hope that this has been helpful to you all and i will see you all again tomorrow for another vlogmas video goodbye